man in the middle, the referee is Anthony Taylor. He was the first referee to get the honour of officiating the FA Cup final twice since 1901 when he took charge of Arsenal Chelsea in 2020. He'd done the same two teams in the final three years previously. As a result of that, he was also the first to send off two players in two different FA Cup finals. So he doesn't have to go to his pockets this evening. It's going to be Middlesbrough who get the game started in their change kit. After the players on both sides have taken a knee to continue to send out a strong message against all forms of racism. Some of the Middlesbrough players choosing to stand and applaud whatever is their way, the same message is sent. Johnny Housen with the first ball forward. And Rafa Varane with the first ball played into touch. Plenty to keep our eyes on, Matt. I know you'll be looking at structure, looking at the tactical shape, but also a few individual performances, and, and no doubt many eyes around the world are on a certain number six, Paul Pogba for Manchester United. Yeah, well, just early signs of really keen and interested to see whereabouts he's going to fit into this United midfield, and, you know, it's, it's always hard to tell when the game's always moving and you're changing positions, but whether or not he stays quite level with McTominay and they play as a bit of a two in front of Maguire and Varane, or whether they see this match as an opportunity to push him forward a little bit, and just sit McTominay on his own in front of those two and try that out. Seems to be a really good game to, to give that a go. We'll have to see how it develops. McTominay's dropping into the back line for now. He's sitting very deep as Varane finds Dallow, who's getting a run of games in the team right now. Dallow Wambasaka has missed the chunk through illness. He is back amongst these substitutes tonight. One for Lumley, and there's a bit of a miscommunication at the back there. And there is a chance as a result off the bar from Sancho and Bruno Fernandes following up. Couldn't make it count. But what about this from Joe Lumley and Dale Fry? They just weren't talking to one another. Well, what a mix up. Nearly a very, very early mistake from the goalkeeper and Fry. You can see Sancho lovely idea he just gets a little bit too much weight on the chip nearly inch perfect but what an opportunity so early on brilliant effort wasn't it really good really measured just just a little bit too much power behind it needed to take a little bit off and you know it was on all day the keeper was so far off his line real mix up between him and fry hasn't scored a home goal yet Jaden sancho he's only got the one for manchester united in 23 games that was in the champions league at villarreal and I like the fact that Luke Shaw just put the ball in there. You know, early on, sometimes teams at home like United can be obsessed with passing the ball through the back of midfield. Shaw got it at his feet and just thought, OK, I'm going to whip one down the channel, test the centre-back, see if the keeper's alive. Really ask the question and certainly have put Middlesbrough on full alert. In a curious way, it might not do Joe Lumley any harm, that. Especially now that he's got the ball in his gloves here and can take a bit of time. Wouldn't have helped Chris Wilder's blood pressure. I think that might have done him a bit of harm for a moment. Just a little heart in mouth moment so early on. I mean, to go behind so early in this fixture would have been a real disappointment. Wilder, the man who brought Sheffield United back up into the Premier League. That's a late challenge, and that will be a, a free kick for Johnny House and going in on Paul Pogba. Tell you what, there are plenty of Leeds United fans who will be cheering that. Well, he, you can tell his intentions were there. I mean, he's done well to get away with without a booking so early on in the game. It was one of those tackles. I'm just going to let you know that I'm here. And Paul Pogba certainly knows he is there now. And Spora. Balogun making his way into the box. Spora hung on too long. Bruno Fernandes attempt to get United moving forward is thwarted. Here's Dallo. Does like to get forward, and he's trying to thread one into Rashford there. And that earlier mix-up seems to really have done Lumley some good, because he was in the right position and took command. Yeah, I like the way United have just tried to put balls behind Middlesbrough. Asked the question of the three centre-backs, I think it was McNair then, who had to run with Rashford, done quite well. Stayed in contact with him, didn't allow him to get any real head of speed, just slowed his running down a little bit, didn't allow him to get to the ball. 
Ronaldo. Fogler. Now Dalla. Typical lively start to uh, an FA Cup tie. Just mentioning Wilder's Premier League pedigree with Sheffield United, and that's how he's viewing this fixture. Keen to stress to his Middlesbrough players and their supporters, this is not a sightseeing trip. You have to look at them as competitors. He will come down particularly hard on any of his players who are asking to swap shirts. Yeah, well, I think he's he's one of those managers that is particularly good at getting a group of players together, getting them really fired up and really at it, which makes him dangerous in cup football. It really does. He's got his system, you know, that three at the back, and he likes to play two up front as well that support each other. I'm sure the message will be, I don't care where we're playing, it can be at Old Trafford, it can be anywhere, same thing applies. We, we respect each other, we work hard for each other, that's his ethic. He did very well with Sheffield United. Rashford, who's found his confidence again the last few games. Bruno Fernandes, now Sancho, Shaw, Ronaldo! Oh. Not many players think about it. He never hesitates. He just didn't make full, proper connection. I mean, the moment the ball just sits there behind him. I mean, technically, how well executed is this? The ability to move his feet and shuffle his body to get that kind of momentum and technique in the air is just fantastic from Ronaldo. And the roll to Lumley again, who's a busy keeper. Bruno Fernandes just... Uh, Sure that the wind pipe's okay. Took a bit of a bash. A good start from United. And six minutes in, really probing and asking the question. Not just being pretty either. Put the ball in where it hurts and put it behind. Fourteen goals since returning. To Old Trafford. Manchester United's leading scorer by seven from Bruno Fernandes, who's not got going to the standards that he'd previously shown. Possibly because of, or as a contributing factor, being Ronaldo's arrival. I hear this conversation a lot about, you know, the numbers you mentioned, Ronaldo, they are phenomenal. I mean, he just seems to be scoring a winning goal every other game, doesn't he? Question always comes back to well, what's he taking away from the team? Match for a Middlesbrough ball. Scott McTominay, the match winner in the last round with an early header against Aston Villa. Scored in the third and the fifth rounds last season. It's elegant. He was being held by Harry Maguire, who counterclaims that he was being backed into free kick Middlesbrough. It certainly looked like Balogun may have had hold of him, but from Maguire's point of view, sometimes you've just got to stand up, don't back off, just hold your ground. Whole line of red. For those in whatever shade of green it is to try and pick their way through. Housen's delivery. It's a free kick for Manchester United. Matt Crooks was the player who was trying to get onto it, and the flag is up. It's decent delivery into a good area from Housen. You feel Middlesbrough have to really take every kind of set piece opportunity as best they can. You know, they're not that well now for creating masses of chances having you know, much of possession either to make the set pieces count last time they were here for a cup tie they won in the league cup in 2015 they won on penalties thomas mehias was their goalkeeping hero he's now in australia with western sydney wanderers and last time borough won here besides that was 
way back when. 4 1 win. Not here, that was uh, at the Riverside in October 2005. Manchester United, otherwise, as you'd expect, have held sway over them. Remembering that game on Teesside, it was the one after which Roy Keane launched a bit of a rant about his teammates on the club's in house TV channel. There might be a chance there, is there a trip? Well, Shpora will ask the question, but it didn't seem that way, he was just struggling to get onto it. Keane left Manchester United shortly after that. And perhaps that 4 1 loss was still in his mind when that happened. I remember that scenario, I don't remember the game particularly, but obviously I remember that time at Manchester United. Here's Sancho, Ronaldo just found a bit of room, Sancho couldn't find him, it's turned clear by McNair. Back with Dean Henderson, who I would think would have been mightily cross if he hadn't been picked tonight, having not got the loan move that he wanted in the last window. It's almost a game that you feel that he had to play, don't you? You're going to keep a goalkeeper who's as keen and hungry to get on the pitch as him. You almost feel you've got to use some cup games to give him some minutes. David De Gea, who really did have a wobble end of last season and before then, was really back in form. It's Ronaldo to Dallo. Rashford wants it. Ronaldo gets it. And it's more of a, a loopy back pass for Joe Lovely, that one. Again, it's something that not many players would have thought of that quickly. And what a cheeky effort. And Ronaldo here, big smile on his face. He knows he just tries to flick this up and volley it. Never really gets the purchase. He almost like the flick, I understand, but then you'd have thought maybe put a bit of power on the strike, but try to just lob the keeper again. I think it might have come off. Dale Fry's back a little yeah, bit, looking at the spin. It did, but he, he didn't really lash no. the ball. It looked to be like a bit of a lob to the back post. Interesting that Rangnick's gone with Rashford right, Sancho left. We know both players would prefer to start on the left. Sancho would prefer the left? So. Yeah. Generally see him on the right, don't we? But yeah. This is an ideal position. Ralph Rangnick will have seen plenty of him at Dortmund. Played in towards Balogun and cut out importantly by Varane. Nice run from Balogun, nice angle to his run, saw the space. Ronaldo down, turns and looks where Anthony Taylor is and waves his arm and Anthony Taylor waves it back. Taylor, experienced player, former Swansea and Aston Villa. Lovely clear. Nelson, snapped by Crooks. Ronaldo. Tomane. Tomane scraps, keeps it, finds Bruno Fernandes. Taking a blow to the face as well, Scott McTominay. Advantage with United. That's behind Dallow. That's behind everybody. And McTominay down on the floor. Crooks really stepped into that tackle. I think he caught McTominay with his forearm. As he just overruns it a little bit. This could be a foul from Hauser, but Crooks steps in a bit late there. Ooh. Yeah, really clatters into him. Used his arm for protection, hasn't he? But the, the elbow's gone into McTominay's yeah. throat. He's okay. Yeah. You can tell it he certainly felt the impact of that. Just a couple of tackles now for Middles. We're really laying down a marker. Definitely part of the game in this fixture. Physically, they have to get amongst that midfield area for sure. Balogun looks really keen to impress. His first minutes for start as well as a substitute three times. Oh, Isaiah Jones making progress. Stopped by Pogba. 
good tackle. Just overran the ball a little bit. Jones went on a really good run. It's only a couple of scenes ago, Isaiah Jones is playing for Tooting and Mitchum United. This is a bit of a step up. There he is. Dale has lost it. And Crooks leans onto Luke Shaw to give United a free kick. And we've got a little bit congested in there. Middlesbrough trying to play a few one-twos around United. After that early couple of scares, they've settled into the game pretty well, it has to be said. First 15 minutes, just now getting a foothold, getting a little bit of possession. Interesting to see how Manchester United go from here. There have been a few games this season under Solskjaer and Rangnick when they looked really bright from the start, but then pretty quickly lost their way. Yeah, you can tell that, that Middlesbrough are a bit more comfortable. And whether or not they have the ability to sustain that kind of, of pressure, as I look at Ronaldo and Fernandes, they're really deep in discussion, pointing, gesturing as to where they want the ball. Interesting relationship, that, isn't it, in terms of a, a playing relationship, the styles that they have and the areas that they both want to pick up. Fernandez. Taken from Sancho, United throw it. Cracking atmosphere. Most of the noise throughout has come from the nine and a half thousand or so Middlesbrough supporters. They've taken their full set of tickets, despite the fact that you can watch this game on any television set anywhere in the world. I mean, I used to love that about the FA Cup, I will say. That added boost of away fans really does add to the atmosphere of most grounds it really does you can you can notice it as a player as well attacking the middle's brand right now McGuire at the back of the queue he's gonna jump for it and head it over and wide Way too much height and depth on that corner for it to be dangerous at all. It's just Trump wants to put the ball in a better area for Maguire to go and attack it. You know, you're heading it so far back with so much air time on the ball. Frank in the middle of a conversation between Darren Fletcher and Chris Arnas. Arnas known to Rangnick from the RB group, that's the, uh, the shaven-headed character who's writing with the earbuds in. Formerly the head coach of New York Red Bulls and Toronto FC in the MLS. Darren Fletcher's taken on that role on the touchline. I think his official title at United these days is technical director, but since Ralph Randick came in, he's been a, a touchline director. Well, certainly not the position of a technical director, they'll be very much in the stand, watching on. As you're right, he appears to be far more hands-on. Sancho, you can see how quick he is there, eating up the ground on Fry. He needs a run of consistent, solid performances from the start, Jaden Sancho. He hasn't really started in a red shirt yet. Not got going started, that's what I mean. To play games, guy, don't you? I mean, you come in as a massive signing, huge money. Togba knows that feeling. McTominay. Sure. Togba. Down. Penalty. Clumsy challenge from... Anthony Dykesdale, and he has no complaints about it, and it won't need much of a check. I mean, I, it's very difficult to, to know what the decision-making is. It's clumsy. He trips Dykesdale. Look at his first foot there. He slips and then lands on that back foot of Pogba. The main problem here is he allowed Pogba to get the wrong side of him. It was a really unintentional tackle. It was a slip that, that caused the penalty, but... You cannot allow someone like Pogba to get half a yard the wrong side of you in the box. You're in big trouble. You have to read it earlier. And he's paid the price. 
Now, earlier on in the season, it was a bit of a debate. Would it be Bruno Fernandes? Would it be Cristiano Ronaldo? It's not even a question anymore. Fernandes fired over against Aston Villa in September. Ronaldo has scored two out of two since. Scored all of the last eight that he's taken as a Manchester United player. That's a situation Joe Lundley will have thought about, facing a Ronaldo penalty. And it's pulled wide! Lundley didn't have to make the save. And listen to the cheers from the Middlesbrough fans. Wow. Cristiano Ronaldo looks down to the penalty spot. Whether or not something unsettled him, I mean, it was most unlike him to miss the target. It was a real skippy run to the left-hand side, really shuffled his feet. And as you can see, he just drags it wide with that right foot. Nothing wrong with the turf, no slip on the standing foot. Just a bad penalty, missing the target. Really didn't expect that. If they get another one, we might have that debate again. It'd be interesting, Monique, can you imagine? Bruno Fernandes might have something to say about it. If he dare. <laughs> it's 19 out of 23, his penalty record now for Manchester United. Got a, a conversion rate that's well over 80% for clubs and country over his career. He scored 143 penalties last time I checked. Three quarters of the ball, Manchester United's first real big chance, Manchester United's still nil nil. I mean, Manchester United dominating the ball is no surprise. Middlesbrough only had 37% possession against Coventry at the weekend. It's not the way that they play. So Manchester United having the ball, yes, I thoroughly expect that, but you really do expect them to be ahead with that penalty. It's a clumsy error from Middlesbrough, they'll be really relieved they've been let off the hook. It's not often you see a penalty where there are no arguments whatsoever from the team that's conceded it. You couldn't do it, could you? No. I mean, it was just completely the wrong side. OK, Dick Steele slipped, but really caught Pogba's trailing leg and it was a clear penalty. We don't have in our ears tonight the, the words of the video assistant referee, but I would imagine the conversation was along the lines of, shall I bother? Yeah. Don't need to look at that. No. Rashford to Pogba. Pogba over to Shaw. A slight concern you might have as somebody with Middlesbrough at heart is that might just fire up the number seven for more. Bruno Fernandes. Sure, big to it by Crooks. We'll need to do that a lot this game. Crooks and the rest of the midfield. Gonna have to get through a lot of work in there, supporting the full-backs and wing-backs as well. Especially in that wide area on the left, Sancho and Shaw really linking up. Chance now! That's Bruno nice. Fernandes looked offside. But he had to get his head down and think about finishing it before that was a concern. And he didn't do it. Classic Fernandez run, just checks his shoulder, goes a little bit earlier, but look how deep. Oh, there. Who's that there? Taylor. I think it's Taylor nearly plays him on. Very close. Classic run from Fernandez. Just darted into that little pocket of space. Gary Bezik, the assistant referee, kept his flag down, so we'll never know. Was, not, not yet, anyway. Well, it was a tough call, wasn't it? Because how deep Taylor was. For the rest of the back four, he was clearly offside, but Taylor was probably three or four yards deeper. Lovely. With a huge clearance. This caused a problem. A momentary one for Varane. Just looked like a wallop from the goalkeeper, but actually it had a bit of purpose to it. Sometimes a good wallop does the trick, though. Just don't see them too often in the Premier League. Edison rarely wallops him. But he plays passes as long as that's a good effect. He does, yeah. You have an accurate wallop, can't you? <laughs> Taylor. Pogba. 
Ashford gets the throw. No frills haircut for Paul Pogba. We, we see him playing the peacock before big games. Sometimes he uh, he coordinates himself for the occasion, but he's come back after his long absence. Looks as though he's uh, in head down professional business mode, keeping it simple. I think he's started the game in that fashion, actually. Sancho. Sancho has a go! Oh, and he finds the net beautifully! Really good work. Excellent finish. Jaden Sancho has his first home goal for Manchester United. He had Jones in his way. He had a, a really difficult angle to think about. But boy, did he have the accuracy and the confidence and Manchester United lead. It's that area of the pitch, again, that Manchester United capitalise on. Look at the space. Jick Steele's gone all the way in there, leaves Jones for dead, but he gets back goal side, doesn't shift his feet quick enough. There's a little deflection. Oh, deflection yeah. He just skips the ball over Lumley. But a good run from Sancho, real intent, that little flick there, just lifted it over the goalkeeper. This is a great angle there. Really difficult for him to react at that distance. But it's all about the intent from Sancho. And Middlesbrough really caught out. Poor, poor shape when the ball turned over. Just left them really exposed. Might be an own goal in the final reckoning. It may well have been going wide Possibly. from Sancho. I'm sure that will be uh, looked at properly by those who uh, count the stats. Might not be his first home goal. We'll have to find out if it was going wide before the touch off the toe of Isaiah Jones. The Manchester United in the mood, Rashford puts it in. And Ronaldo beaten to it by Lumley. Oh, pick your battles, Joe. He's too happy with the little attempt from Ronaldo just to get on the end of this. I think he's got every right to have a nibble at it, but I think he just catches the back of, of Lumley's neck or shoulder there, just leaves his foot in. And he's got every right to let him know, doesn't matter who he is. Back to the goal, Middlesbrough really, really disappointed, just got very sloppy with their shape, got caught out with that quick turnover of possession in midfield. And Dick Steele had just pushed so high up the pitch and left a massive space behind him. Balogun with a hopeful look towards the referee, doesn't get anything. Manchester United won, Middlesbrough nil. And Middlesbrough have yet to trouble Dean Henderson. Whereas United have already uh, got three on target and an overall tally of eight attempts to score. One of which was the aberration of a penalty from Cristiano Ronaldo that he put wide. <laughs> Dallow. certainly does appear to be just that McTominay sat in front of the two centre-backs and Pogba just roaming a little bit higher up, more of a free roll in the middle of the park. Crooks battles with Pogba. McNair. Right sure. That, that midfield guy really is an area that you feel if, if Ralph Ragnick can get that sorted get Manchester United really firing and the balance right in the middle of the park. What an impact that will make for this team. It's just been questionable for so long now. And perhaps that one sitter of McTominay or Fred is the one to allow Pogba in the team as well with Fernandes. He seems to have gone with this 4-3-3. He abandoned his uh, tried and trusted from Germany lineup of 4-2-2-2 yeah. quite quickly. I think you're right might be the way to get Fernandez and Pogba in together moving forward as they like to do and here's Ronaldo with Rashford coming in I think Ronaldo was trying to score himself but well was that a cross was it a shot to me the way he strikes the ball this is a shot and he just drags it with his left foot nice little spin good ball from Fernandez oh it's tight whether it had been offside or not maybe half a yard but that for me is a shot I think if, if he's going to cross it, he's going to pull that back more for Marcus Rashford. 
you know Rashford's got the pace to get yep. that. I think it might have been offside. It looked half a yard, just knee. his foot was yeah. a little bit too early. Let's throw a goal behind, will have to leave themselves open to that sort of situation much more than they would otherwise like to. Maybe not this early in the game, but it will happen. Well, they've, been, they've been quite open to that in this game already so far. It's one of the trans, when they lose the ball in the middle of the park, they really aren't in good positions in terms of the back three. You've almost got to defend constantly, even when you have the ball, you can't switch off. Not against this team. Rashford had the power, but he doesn't have the goal. Flag was up straight away that time. Just a real opportunistic strike from Marcus Rashford. Very straight, just gets his head down and buries it. Almost the movement on the ball is what threw Lumley, but you can clearly see he's just edged offside. Good strike straight under the keeper, but the power took it through. It's these little moments again where Middlesbrough they're really lacking in reaction time and positioning. It's quite easy for Manchester United just to create these little opportunities. Not been an easy night for their goalkeeper. Stano who puts it out. Mistake early on. That one went straight through him. It should be 3-0, shouldn't it? Yeah. Just looking at the way this is being played, the way most FA Cup ties and indeed Premier League games we see these days are played, Matt. Season on season, from your playing days, does the intensity just rise all the time? Um, I think it does in different ways, Guy, to be honest. I think there's a more of a, an intensity in terms of agility and movement in football now, certainly at, at the highest level. It's Taylor. But in terms of you know the intensity in other aspects it matches it it just changes in, in what area it goes into the, the mobility and and pace that players have now I think that is just constantly getting better and better and better like you see in most sports really we notice it in the world of broadcasting in terms of which shots that the the director's going to go for etc the ball just never seems to stop moving there never seems to be a break or a, a lull in the game where you can sort of find a, a story to tell, it's it's constant, the pace is unrelenting. Manchester United have been like that from the start tonight. I thought you were going to say that you're just constantly getting better and better. Well, no, no, well, you are going, you are. No. <laughs> Always improving. That'll get letters. <laughs> Lumley out. Shabora. Difficult to deal with the bouncing ball. Middlesbrough have laid a glove on United. Certainly Henderson's gloves haven't had anything to get to grips with. Maybe now. Spora wants it in the box. Maguire prevents it from reaching him. It's got to go first time. Has to the cross. There's no need for a touch. Look how quickly Manchester United turn this into an attack. Ronaldo in on goal. Good block by Lumley. Straight at him, mind you. Help his mindset. That's a couple of times now that Fry's been left in that kind of one-on-one -on -one position with Sancho or Ronaldo. There's Housen, look how open it is for Middlesbrough. Balogun. Balogun's got the chance to hit it. Just not like that. I think he had visions of that just nestling in that top corner, tries to bend the ball around the keeper. I mean, if they were to draw level, how little activity they've had in front of goal, it would be a real shock. And here's the chance, just a moment before that, Fry trying to recover, just puts enough pressure on Ronaldo, forces him to strike the ball, and a decent save from Lumley, just keeps it out with his body. You've still got your, your ear to the ground of the goings-on at Arsenal. What's the feeling about Falar in Balogun? Only 20. What, started one game, come on as a substitute a few times for the Gunners? Yep. Well, he's a player they see for the future. Clearly, you know, a loan spell in his development is hugely important. And there's there's a pathway there, isn't there? When you look at the situation, they need a centre forward and Ketia, Lacazette, out of contract in the summer. Aubameyang's gone. Aubameyang's gone. There's there's a pathway. So you know, this is a big opportunity for him. He needs to come 
to Middlesbrough and show that he can play, he can cope with senior men's football. Big night for him here. Yep. Here's Rashford. He knows about the, the many ups and downs of a, a young player's progression. It's been a bit of a down at the start of this season, but the last couple of games have seen him on the up again. Won the last game here against West Ham with the last kick of the match. In the last round against Aston Villa, he seemed all at sea at times. Confidence game. Sancho he must be on the up after his goal if it is his goal in the end and In the Aston Villa game you have to say the whole team was a little bit at sea and I think that that's the one thing that affects Marcus Rashford maybe more than what it should do He's a little bit dependent on the team performing well for him to have a good game 24 Marcus Rashford and he really does have it all in terms of what a forward player does need 93 goals for Manchester United by the age of 24 is not a bad return. Lumley is looking for the tall crooks. He was beaten by the even taller McTominay. Crooks again. Dykesdale. Housen. Has to go into reverse. It's a good turn. He just got himself a little yard away from Bruno Fernandes. Dykesdale to Crooks. Into Spora. Tetler's coming in the box here. As Varane deals with it. Ronaldo, Rashford. Really nice idea from Marcus Rashford. The ball into him is very difficult. He wanted to play that first time because he saw the run from Fernandez, but the pass into him had so much pace on it, it was very difficult to guide that ball one touch. Coming up to 37 minutes played. Manchester United won Middlesbrough nil. 25th minute goal from the boot of Jaden Sancho via a deflection. From the toe of Isaiah Jones. And all that just five minutes after Cristiano Ronaldo had fired a penalty wide. And it has been 90% one way the game. United's way. Shaw. Rashford. Cleared by Tavernier. And wasn't going anywhere fast with that. McTominay. It was into Sancho, it was blocked by Housen, who tracked his run. Did well, Housen just to stick to task. Good run from Sancho into the space. Comes all the way across. And I, I like to see that from wide players. Just mix it up. You don't have to stay and hug the touchline all the time. You know, making those runs into the pitch is sometimes the most dangerous. Runs just at Manchester United, another corner, an opportunity to threaten the goal. And the question in Middlesbrough's defence here whether or not they can cope with the movement or the delivery. Shaw with his left foot trying to whip this ball in. And the Premier League, Manchester United, rather remarkably, and here we are in early February, the only side yet to score from a corner this season. In from Shaw. Oh, that's just crazy. I believe that, can you? Over halfway through. Unbelievable. I mean, what, what you're missing out on, not scoring from corners. It, That's actually hurt you, hasn't it? As it, a has, back. it has. It has. I mean, I had, I had no clue that they hadn't done, but that is that's really shocking. I couldn't have thought Harry Maguire's too impressed by it either. No, and like I say, I, I watch him play for England and he's a constant threat in scoring goals from corners all the time. Dallin. Sancho. Pogba. Drilled it against the shins of McNair. Here 
we go again. Tonight won't be the night because that Premier League stat will stay the same. No, but it'd be nice to see him score a goal <laughs> from a corner. You've upset me now, Guy. Not even trying this time. It's left to run, and Rashford has fired it high. But he's got another corner. It was a slight deflection. Well, nicely worked. Real intention, little dummy, Rashford running to the edge of the box. Maybe not quite enough pace on the ball. Just that little dummy there from Fernandez. Dick Steer just gets out, puts enough pressure on Rashford. Might as well try something different. Short routine this time. Sancho easily worked between him and Shaw. Rashford! Straight down the barrel for Joe Lumley. Well, shot from the same position, but worked very differently. Really nice, actually. I like the way Sancho came out and then made that little straight run across. The keeper's had a bit of work to do, Lumley, hasn't he? He's been kept busy in this opening 40 minutes. Time to have a couple of touches. This one has barely moved from the spot that he's standing in all match. One here last season, just over a year ago with Sheffield United, although it's interesting this week that he described that as a hollow victory because of the absence of supporters at the time. He just said he, he didn't take anything from it, really. I remember that, and it was very much against the, the run of how the form was going. I mean, Sheffield United were in a terrible run at the time, weren't they? Did give him a little bit of a boost. Pop has lost it. And in trying to stretch to retrieve, has not only given away a free kick, but hurt himself. And got a, a booking from Anthony Taylor, too. He's not going to get away without a yellow card. Tries the little Croy flick, just slips there. And then loses the ball, does quite well to recover, but then just clips the heels, gets a little bit of the ball. Too much of the player beforehand. And he had already caught Marcus Tavernier. Brother of the Rangers captain, James. Housen, here is Tavernier. Balogun. In comes Rashford. Varane. It's good to Housen. The dummy doesn't work for Ronaldo. He's now directing those behind him out to block, and that's what they've done. He's got to say captain's orders, but he's not, is he? Wires. The armband. What's that? They say Chris Wilder hasn't moved from that spot. He hasn't. I mean, he just must be standing there watching and just seeing the dominance of Manchester United. But his side are they're hanging in there, aren't they? You think they're close to half time to go in at 1 0 down after a first half display of not really competing as well as probably what he would have hoped. It still keeps them alive in this game. goes Jones a little too elaborately Bruno Fernandes keep it at his feet Tavernier it's a bit of a borough response approaching the break and that's going to come off the boot of Spora and that's where that attack ends yeah, Spora's really struggled to get past anyone he keeps kind of having the ball and facing players up he doesn't look to have the pace to go round any of the Manchester United defenders Plenty have travelled from Teesside and other areas besides. Always a club with terrific support. Chris Wilder might be the man to bring them back into the Premier League. 
been out since 2017. And that's their only season in the top flight since 2009. It was after an 11 season run, they were they were part and parcel of the top flight in England. Aaron Southgate, Steve McLaren. Manchester United legend started their relative glory days, Brian Robson. Playing at Middlesbrough against good teams, Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank. Oh, they've had players. Yeah, really good players. Front of the players in the 90s that turned out in a Borough shirt. Lights of Janino, Fabrizio Ravanelli, and Mendieta. Alan Boxic. Oh, goodness me. Jeremy. Yakuba oh, could go on. We'll stop. Middlesbrough will be hoping those sorts of days. The big stars will be back at the Riverside soon. One minute to go at Old Trafford until half time. Like it may have come off the hand of Tavernier, but Manchester United press on. At least for a moment, cleared by Lumley. It's going to take quite a turnaround, even at only 1 0 for there to be an upset in this one tonight. Might be two before half-time, Ronaldo. Headed straight to Lumley, it's a backheader really for Bruno Fernandes. It's a long way out to get any real purchase on the ball to trouble Lumley. Nice run from Ronaldo, they made a lot of those little angled runs with slid ball straight passes down the side, United. Fernandes going to struggle to punch the ball hard enough to, to score from there. Lumley away. And it is half-time, Manchester United have the lead, Manchester United have been dominant from the start. Should have been more, really. Jadon Sancho got the goal, 25th minute, with his shot deflected in off Isaiah Jones. But before that, Cristiano Ronaldo fired wide from the penalty spot after Pogba had been clumsily brought down by Anthony Dykstead. Half-time at Old Trafford, it is Manchester United 1, Middlesbrough 0. There was an announcement just before well, just after the half-time whistle, that due to a technical fault, there wasn't any food or drinks available at half-time, and the booing that reigned around the ground, when you'd have thought that Manchester United had gone off 3-0 behind. No pies at Old Trafford. It's going to be what I told you, didn't we say before the start, there's always a story at this club, there's always drama. No changes made by either Ralph Ramnick or Chris Wilder. During the interval, I know Chris Wilder well enough. I think he will have had quite a bit to say to his players who are challenging for the playoffs and maybe a bit more trying to get back in the Premier League and uh, are generally a better side than they've shown. Okay, they're facing better opposition, but they're a better team than they showed in the first 45. I think he's very much a, a manager that will be that won't talk about whether or not they should be winning or getting beat, but as a way of getting beat, there's a way of approaching an FA Cup tie at Old Trafford and it has to be fearless and I think in that first half you've seen them a little bit cautious, a little bit edgy, not really putting their foot in and getting amongst Manchester United as, as well as what they can do. You've got to have a go, you know, and I, and I think that's what he expects from his team and he want to see more of that in this second half. He said last weekend after his team beat Coventry City that the performance was a bit nervy, a little edgy, and he, he really did tear his players off a strip in losing at Blackburn in the game before then. And they're on the front foot here, and that's a good ball across. Wasn't particularly well dealt with by Manchester United. And maybe should have somebody should have been on the end of Jones' cross. As it is, it's United breaking, and Ronaldo's beaten to it by Lumley. Well done, Lumley there, for being brave enough to read that and come out, but that was a fantastic ball from Jones right into the danger area, I think it was Maguire just ended up leaving it, didn't want to get a touch on it. Any run from a Middlesbrough player across into the middle of the goal and it was a tap-in. But I think that again is the mindset we're talking about, Guy. Having a player, being brave enough for Old Trafford as a midfield player or wide player to make that run, get in the box, throw yourself forward, don't be cautious. Have to approach it in that way, Middlesbrough. We do have two up top. Spora has got seven goals this season, four in his last six appearances actually. And Balogun, 
got Aaron Connolly waiting in the wings. And uh, if they want to change direction a bit, they've got 19 year old Josh Coburn, who's a bit different, stands six foot three. So I think this is quite tailor made for Connolly. He's a really willing runner, Aaron Connolly. At the moment the ball ends up in midfield, he's spun and on his bike looking to run a channel. The pull on to Maguire, try and hurt him in behind with a bit of pace and direct running. Wouldn't be surprised to see him introduced quite early on in the second half. Still trying to work out what sort of technical fault could mean there's no food or drink available. Hmm. It's hard to imagine, <laughs> doesn't it? Takes the fun out of going to football for sure. <laughs> Problem with the tills, maybe. Yeah. There's Maguire. Pogba. Wouldn't be happy if you were sitting in hospitality. This was already made. They ate before the game. McNair. One ball shout against Dallow from the Middlesbrough fans, and you can hear their reaction to not getting their wish. It certainly looked like a handball, didn't it? The ball just bounced up off the turf. Housen. It's better from Housen, just getting in front of Fernandez, trying to harass him, step in front, win the ball. Sancho, Dallo, Bruno Fernandez wants it. Rashford won't get it. And a little arm on McNair means a Middlesbrough free kick. And he's been clever there, McNair just used the contact from Rashford, not enough to really send him over, but goes to ground and wins the foul. Looks to be only four minutes in, just a little bit brighter from Middlesbrough. Team who changed manager early in November. Neil Warnock was sacked after three games without a win. And a Chris Wilder in the championship. They've won seven, drawn two, lost two. Very good start for him. Very good manager. He's really brought them back into playoff contention, hasn't he? I think they were 15 when he took yeah, over. They were way down there, and I'm with you. I really like him as a manager. I really felt for him last season with Sheffield United. You could tell he was just trying to keep it afloat, but really hit a rocky patch. But before that, I mean, what he'd done to that club and how they were playing and how entertaining they were to watch was, was great in the Premier League. Dallow, Ronaldo, Rashford looks for Dallow, carried on at the same speed with his run forward, Rashford, Crooks, Oof, just enough for Lumley, who's then caught late. For the second time with Ronaldo, just catches him again, he caught him once in the first half, and just there, as Lumley comes into clear, it's a risky back pass from Crooks, doesn't quite know where Ronaldo is. Luckily, the pace of the ball just makes it back to the keeper. A smile now as he uh, exchanges a word with referee Anthony Taylor, he's just pointing it out. That number seven's done me twice now. He's got a point, hasn't it? Certainly on that one, I mean, Ronaldo really did dangle a leg, there was no chance of winning the ball. Chance for Neil Taylor with that. Give him a thumbs up, but I don't think he means it. Just a standard gesture, isn't it? Thumbs up. Varan has strolled through the game so far. Maguire has done something similar. In the face of it, they should be a heck of a partnership. But Back for Manchester United. Here's Rashford. Oh, there would have been Rashford, not even he's quick enough to reach that. And it just shows you how quickly you have to put the brakes on at Old Trafford, doesn't it? When you're running out of pitch, such a steep drop off on the side and the back of the pitch. I've often wondered about the touchline that yeah. the bricks 
on the edge of the pitch. Just a row of bricks as you come down, then it drops again. I've seen many a player go skittling over onto the side, and you really feel that there could be a serious injury at some point. Fandello. Familiar with the, the layout of the ground it's on this side as we look at it on the touchline. Pitch is a raised platform. Headed down by Short. Bruno Fernandez. Rashford. Longer will pop for goal on his return to action. He won't be booked in for 90 minutes. I think it'd be at least an hour, maybe more. It depends on the intensity of the game as well, guy. I mean, he started in the second half pretty low key. First half, he was up and at it, wasn't he? In the thick of it, really trying to stamp his authority on the game. But he's been a bit more relaxed in this second half. Tuesday when the Premier League in England resumed, Manchester United a short trip to struggling Burnley. Here's Sancho, in around the back of Jones, into Rashford! Off target, or the flick of a finger from the keeper, I think he's just missed. Yeah, I think it was a miss, I think he's off target, I think he might have been offside. Another really good spin from Sancho, catches Jones out again, he's just too quick a thinker for him. Whether or not, if that been on target, it may have been offside, but... Here's Balakan. Runners arriving for Middlesbrough. Oh. Balakan so close to finding a way through to Tavernier. They've committed green shirts there. They've got to get back quickly now. Rashford, who looked onside to me, and he's onside here. And he's got Ronaldo and Sancho getting there. Here's Ronaldo! And he ripples the side of the net. That little ripple of the net that really sucks you in to think the ball's gone in. It's another really well-timed run. Onside again from Rashford, just gets his head up, nice cut back. Lovely pace on the pass, good run from Ronaldo. Round the outside of Fry, just can't hit the target. Tomanek. I don't know who that was at the back for you. Know, was it McTominay or Varane that just intercepted that ball? One of the two, really in important interception. Short. Bruno Fernandes trying to make a run. Crox is trying to stop Shaw. And now Jones. Spora has gone outside. And a measure the pass through to Balak and it had a lot of red shirted players to bypass. Half hearted attempt, really. And here go Manchester United again. This is so open, so fast. Sancho, Ronaldo. And he kept his footing over the outstretched arm of the keeper and then ran out of pitch. I think it's very honest of Ronaldo to keep his foot. He could have easily just had one eye on the contact and just left his foot in to the goalkeeper who really commits himself here. Doesn't need to come out and go to ground. And I mean, How many times have you seen a centre forward just fall over the goalkeeper at that point and win a penalty? It wasn't in his mind, was it? I don't think he fancied another pen, Guy. You can say that. <laughs> I'm not nearly qualified enough. <laughs> I haven't checked your record on penalties. Uh, zero taken. <laughs> Maybe in a shootout. Oh, that's brave. Uh, at Middlesbrough, actually. Didn't end well. There's Tavernier. Look at the room on the right. Jones. Has to make best use of it. Pull back for Crooks. Ooh. That's a fine save by Henderson. He's had nothing to do all game. Ready room when required. Well, these are some of the toughest games for goalkeepers. They really are. You have to turn on at one moment, and this is the moment for Henderson so far in this game. It's at the near post, but he has to react. Goes with his right hand, really strong. Good effort from Crooks and a good cutback. Would have been. A dream for Matt Crooks, lifelong Manchester United supporter. 
was saying in the build-up to the game, they've been seats at Old Trafford in his family for over 40 years. Some of his family will be here supporting his opponents. And he very nearly drew Middlesbrough level. They've certainly pressed forward a little bit more, haven't they? With a bit more intent. There are the bricks, by yeah. the way. Brick edging, that's nice to run towards, but... No, they've done better, certainly since half-time, in committing men forwards, and they're starting to just make more of a game of this. Change of ball. A little bit of air taken out of the other one. This one fully inflated for Tavernier. Didn't get full enough elevation. Well, that's worked inadvertently for Jones. Balogun. And the deflection, the block from Shaw takes it into the gloves of Henderson. And suddenly, it's as though somebody's pressed a button. The game switched on. Yeah, well, again, four or five Middlesbrough players in the box, which is great to see. To be brave, Chris Wilder, those were within his words. You know, what we've got to lose, we won them down. You have to be brave, let's make a game of it, take the game to Manchester United. We were talking penalties just before that last flurry of action, and maybe just worth reminding everybody that in the FA Cup this season, as has been the case from fifth round onwards recently, in all from third round onwards, all the way now, no replays, no, no, there is extra time, no replays, but it's settled on the day, first tie. Extra time and penalties if needed. That's brought only a goal away from taking us close to that situation. Tominator Fernandez. Shaw sure won't get that. A little bit too much pace on the pass. Luke Shaw. Sure. Again, another player looking to just raise those fitness levels, get that sharpness back after a little spell out of the team. Quite interesting that, that Middlesbrough are playing these short goal kicks. Again, they're happy with the ball against the second ball. Not particularly happy with. Could none of be getting questioned, or whoever pumps the balls up. It's not like the replica she buy. For a discount price, they, they shouldn't need much inflating. Money! If anything, an, an over inflated ball is far worse than a soft one. When it's too hard and really doesn't have that bounce to it. They aren't centre back's boots. Although, check out Maguire's. It'll be good to wear those playing at the back. The liveliest boots on the pitch, aren't they? That's where we're going to make a change in a moment. Duncan Watmore getting ready. There's Pogba, that was nice. He's short. Good ball in from Shaw. And Ronaldo was in front of Bruno Fernandes, who might have been the better bet. Well, they're in each other's space again a little bit, which is interesting. Short conversation. But Ronaldo, whenever the ball's wide, I mean, there's not many players of his talent that you see that are so good in the air as Cristiano Ronaldo. He really is a brilliant header of the ball. So, Falarin Balogun has yet to register his first goal since being borrowed by Borough from Arsenal. And coming on in his place is Duncan Watmore with a word of encouragement from fourth official Martin Atkinson. There's plenty about big occasions. Watmore knows about Manchester United, but from way back when, he was released by the club at 12 years old. Well, Balogun has had his first start and an opportunity. He hasn't really featured too much in this game. There's not been too much for him to go off, to be honest, but he'd be glad to get the first hour of, of the start under his belt. Let's see if he starts again at Queen's Park Rangers on Wednesday night. Watmore, who is lively, he is direct. Whether he's through the middle or out wide, he will run at defenders. That is his game. He asked the question of Varane there, and he had the answer. Read the game. Like you mentioned before, Varane has just read every single run or, or moment in this game so far. He's been very comfortable. Much more even contest since half-time. Jones, he's getting more in the game. Tabernier too. 
McNair. Jones. Crooks. All a bit ponderous. Can feel the excitement coming from that section of the ground though from the Middlesbrough fans as Lumley takes a curious position. Sorts it out though. Well it's decisive, wasn't it? Came out of his box very early, but he's constantly trying to anticipate that ball in behind. I think he knows that the back three of Middlesbrough are gonna struggle with the pace of Ronaldo or Fernandez or Sancho if that ball does get down the side and he's, he's got a really high starting position. Fernandez across to Shaw. Pogba. And Tomine. Rashford. Able to cut in. Able to shoot, straight against McNair. Taylor. Spora did really well there. Well played, really good hold-up play from Spora. Jones, three to find. Really good cross. Oh. It was what more, and it's Crooks. And Middlesbrough celebrate. Manchester United claim handball. What more miscontrolled to start with? It seemed to bounce up somewhere near his arm. Crooks into pounce and equalise for now. The Manchester United supporter scores at Old Trafford. Well, what a brilliant counter attack this is. It starts with Spora. Great hold up play. That's a great cross into the box, and it's going to be pulled back for a handball, you feel. It just touches Watmore's hand right there. As he controls it, it just knocks it down to the floor, but it's a lovely little lofted ball to the back post with Crooks arriving. Great commitment. Bodies into the box. Look how many Middlesbrough players are arriving, but that really does graze the hand of Watmore. Now, had Watmore gone on to score, wouldn't that have been the case, but haven't they changed it so that unless it's a deliberate handball, then if you're not the scorer, it's going to be OK. Everybody's regrouped, ready for the kickoff. Little look to the referee, the thumbs up. Anthony Taylor's taking direction, and he's got the thumbs up for the game to go on, and it is 1-1 at Old Trafford. Well, it's been thoroughly deserved, it really has. You know, just before the goal, we're talking about how much more of a game this is with the way Middlesbrough have approached it. And that counter-attack was excellent all round. Hold up play, spread it wide. Jones with the run, really good cross into the box and just caught Manchester United cold. And what is the saying? Fortune favours the brave. Since the break, Middlesbrough have come out with a different mindset. They have taken the game back to their illustrious hosts, and let's be honest, they've rocked them. What a change. Watmore on, immediately making a difference, and bringing the best out of Spora and others too. What a cross from Jones. Just little bits of quality, weren't there, which were lacking in the first half. Maybe it was the mindset or the bravery to believe that they could produce that kind of quality, but they've certainly done it in this second half. And Crooks gambling. Yeah. Didn't get in the box first half. No. And ben, that, that is his entries. game. Yeah, barely any entries into the box at all. But already in the second half, they're arriving, they're throwing men forwards. Making a real game of it now. Big questions for, for Manchester United to answer. It's Matt Crooks' seventh goal of the season. Now Jones eating up the ground on Maguire. Which way is he going to pass him? A lot of Maguire to pass. And Jones with a little tug back. He just doesn't need to do that, Jones. He's done all the hard work. Let's Harry Maguire off the hook there, really. He's facing his own goal line in the corner. He's got to manoeuvre himself out. Here's that touch just there. Clips Watmore's left hand. Looked to me as though the arm was up for balance. He was trying to get it out of the way. And yeah. then trying to get it out of the way, he's hit the ball. No doubt, but it's helped him control the ball, if anything, it's nudged the ball down so he can take that 
earlier. If the ball doesn't get tapped down, I think the, the block comes in, so he certainly assisted the goal. Sancho. Manchester United have to rise again. Ronaldo. Shaw. Referee's positioning didn't help him. Sancho. Turn clear by Dale Fry. Maguire. Ronaldo. Turned away from Crooks. Tries to feed McTominay. Fry. Hits it well away. Lansborough chasing much more keenly, pressing, closing. Just that position there from Crooks on Fernandez when Varan heads it down in the first half. Manchester United players were then having a touch, getting their head up, passing the ball. Just there, Crooks is on him on that first touch, wanting to apply pressure, making a tackle. This makes all the difference. Dallow. Old Trafford stunned. Apart from the nine and a half thousand away section. They're stunned in a different way and believing that they can properly turn this around now, Borough. Tomine. Nicely collected by Dallo. Way over the head of Ronaldo. It was a poor selection to cross the ball there. Brilliant pass from McTominay. Really fired it in. See how it just pops it down. Yep. Guy, it, it, the ball would float higher and weight in the air. It would give time for Varane to make a challenge there if he doesn't put that down with his hand. It massively assists that goal. Which is why I find it hard to believe they haven't ruled it out for handball. 1-1 one, one it is. Crooks has his first goal away from home for Middlesbrough. There's a, there's a nice little, little part to that. Six goals at home and then one at the home where he would watch football. There's one more again. Here's Spora holding oh. off the challenge of Maguire to start with, but Maguire stuck to it. It's Middlesbrough on top right now. I really thought that was going to open up for Spora. Chris Wilder scrambling to get the ball back on the pitch there. He wants to keep the momentum for his team. At the moment, they're causing Manchester United far more problems defensively than what Manchester United are causing Middlesbrough. Oh, on the back foot. Here's Sancho, here's McTominay. And go back to Henderson. So if a handball's in a build-up, then go. You can still obviously be ruled out for handball. You mentioned that it's not the actual goal scorer that's handled the ball, but handball still affects the, yeah, the goal. Yeah, absolutely. If that had been a defender, it would have been a penalty. Yeah. Yeah. So to me, if the offence has been missed, then... That's a miss from a VAR, I agree, it? yeah. Manchester United will feel aggrieved, but... Middlesbrough will agree with what I said earlier, fortune favours the brave, and they've had a touch of it. Yellow card there for Marcus Tavernier. Well, that was the one thing on the stats as well, we looked at half-time. Manchester United have made more fouls than Middlesbrough. Here's Rashford, who gets in. Denied by Lumley. Punches the air to celebrate another block. Just straight down the throat of the goalkeeper there from Marcus Rashford. Good run, nice play from Pogba, sees the run, really good bright run. But he just can't hit it low, nice height. If he goes along the ground, Rashford there, I think he's got far more of a chance in that near post just to squeeze the ball. Another save for Lumley. Now for Rangnick just... Moving from foot to foot. Something on here for Fernandez. Oh. oh! Middlesbrough really are scraping up every bit of luck that's available to them. Unbelievable stuff, really. I mean, great pressure. Really risky decision making at this stage in the game and how it's poised for Middlesbrough, but 
Well, it's Bruno Fernandes not hit the target. Rashford, Ronaldo, he's off balance. He can't find Sancho, somebody found that a bit much in the crowd. And he's trying to go again. Week in there. <laughs> what more is tripped by Maguire? Maguire angrily barks at him. Looked like a trip. I don't quite understand what Harry Maguire was, was saying there, but this is really risky play. Doesn't need to play that ball. He's got to put it up the field, but he just pulls it. Oh, he's Fernandez. You almost feel he's got to put it the other side, guy. Just lean your body and just bend it in the other corner. Lumley's momentum was taking him to the right. He had the rest of the goal to aim at. Off the hook again. Joe Lumley's led a bit of a charmed life he tonight. Has. He really has. From that very first moment of the mistake and Sancho hitting the crossbar. Bruno Fernandes will know it should be 2-1. Manchester United will be thinking it should be 2-0. Well, this is a cup tie, isn't it? Good FA Cup tie now. What more was being cuddled by Maguire. Mike Stale. Shaw won the race to it. He was caught by Crooks. Being unfair to Matt Crooks when I say he doesn't have the build of a box to box midfielder, but that's the role he's performed well this half. He's a big lad, isn't he? Looks, you know, I saw him standing next to Maguire and Varane on the set pieces. He's, he's mixing it with them in terms of height. He's a really tall midfield player. Played a little bit with Rangers in 16 17. He joined them from Accrington along with Josh Windus, son of Dean. He's now at Sheffield Wednesday. What a moment for him. Player who made it 1-1. Rashford. Pogba. Rashford. Trying to roll over the top of the ball. Spora in a duel with Maguire. The earlier offence is given. Free kick to Middlesbrough a bit further back. I think that may have been a foul as well from Maguire. Spora has become way more into this game as well in the second half. Started to play like a proper centre forward, try and hold the ball up, physically use his body. Chat going on between Chris Wilder and his long time trusted assistant Alan Nil in the hat. Alan Nil was a, a centre back of some repute in the lower leagues in England. And a very good football brain. uses every opportunity to bounce ideas off him. Bruno Fernandes back to Harry Maguire. Fernandes. Shaw. Easy for Dale Fry. What more? Ideal person to bring on as a substitute with the way that he plays the game. Sancho to Ronaldo. Bruno Fernandes. Ronaldo keeps it away from Dykesdale. But he's blocked by Fry. Pogba. Turn back for Bruno Fernandes, who's tracked another. His shooting boots on this evening, and he knows it. He's got that frustrated look. It's a tough ball to hit because it was too close to him, really, to strike it first time. So, you see that handball again, and the goal from Crooks. Manchester United players really appealing, and rightly so. Don't think he cares too much, though, does he? Just getting a a re-examination of, of the tweak that was made. I refer to it at the time of the uh, the handball interpretations. Last season, that Middlesbrough goal would definitely not have stood, but if it has been ruled as accidental from a player who's involved but doesn't score themselves, then they will stand these days. Not if Watmore had put the ball in the net by himself. 
question was, was it purely accidental? It will be talked about as Middlesbrough press on looking for a second. Here's Jones. Here's Dykstra. Confidence searching through the T-siders now. I believe they were a, a whole division below. That's a clip from Pogba. Free kick Middlesbrough. I think the, the clear message here is that you can do this to Manchester United. I think that's the, that's the real thing to talk about here. How can Middlesbrough do this to Manchester United at home in the second half of the game that they've been in total control of? I think that's the question that, that every Manchester United fan is stepping back and asking and what Ralph Ragnick needs to look at. It's Chris Wilder who makes the next change. He's made two, Ralph Ragnick hasn't moved yet. Matt Crooks is off, he's had his moment. That's how he dreamt it. And on will come the Argentinian Martin Piero, who is a proper number 10. Interesting switch, isn't it? It's bold, very bold. Very Chris Wilder, best form of defence. Let's get hold of the ball, maybe get on the front foot, ask the question even more of Manchester United. They've certainly done that in this second half. South American number 10, memories of Janinho. This will come in from Tavernier. Fry was at the back. The other number six, Pogba, who gets it away. Not a great ball from Ronaldo, didn't help Fernandez at all. Howson strolls through. What more? What more wants it again? Taylor. Had to get back to his feet once, couldn't second time. Didn't look much of a challenge from Dallow. Not much of a clearance either. Well, we know Manchester United fans right around the world will feel that they've been uh, shortchanged here, they'll feel the luck hasn't been with them, and the Middlesbrough equaliser shouldn't be allowed to stand, but the rest of us watching on. This is a cracking FA Cup tie to get the fourth round going. It's exactly what it needed, isn't it? You know, after that first half, I think everyone kind of went away feeling, well, we know what direction this result's going in. And nothing like the FA Cup surprises you more. I've certainly done that in this second half. The first half, there was only one direction to totally, the game. Totally, nobody expected. That Manchester United were going to be under threat or, or have any type of issue in this game at all. So, so comfortable. And that has been United's season. Yep. With a few exceptions. Sometimes they've turned it around themselves. Recently at Brentford. Better second half in that one. They need to be better in the last 10 minutes here. We've got a corner. Courtesy of Taylor's block. How many times have we seen a goal go in? This end at Old Trafford in the last five, ten minutes of a game. I've, I've lost count. You know, it's almost like it's downhill, isn't it? And here he goes. He'll feel he's making this journey in vain this yeah. season. Yeah. And he scores ten a week in training. Over towards Pogba. It's always a bit too high for him. I don't like the corner. I haven't liked a couple of corners that are coming from Luke Shaw, that left foot, he's just catching it a bit thick and really getting too much height and depth on the cross. What's the issue here? It's Joe Lumley who called Anthony Taylor's attention to it. It's a little coming together off the ball. Is it McNair down there? Yeah. That was with Ronaldo. Well, Marcus Rashford's going off, and Anthony Alanga to come on, who's uh, getting a little bit more game time since Ralph Ratnick's arrival at Old Trafford. And Pogba's lasted a little bit longer, well, a lot longer than we thought he might, and it is a straight swap with Fred. Yeah, nearly a full game for Paul Pogba, Pogba who has done pretty well, has to be said, after not playing for a while. I think he's applied himself well, certainly in the first half, was very bright. And Fred comes on in his position, straight swap. If United win, they will consider this a, a very satisfactory return for Pogba. Everything's got the plan, but only if they win. Do you feel that, that Fernandez now will just play that role? He'll be flitting everywhere. He'll have McTominay and Fred sat 
in front of the two centre backs, and Fernandez can now drift where he wants to. He'll be a happy man. 20 years in management this month. Been at Alfreton, Halifax, Oxford, Northampton, Sheffield United, his boyhood club. Now back in the game with Middlesbrough. Not just back in this game. A large part of this second half on top of it. That said, haven't Manchester United had the chances to put this away a long time ago? It should have been 3-0, shouldn't it? After half an hour, probably, in this game, and we'd be sat here and it'd be a very different match we'd be talking about, but they weren't managed to capitalise on that pressure. And it goes Sancho with Bruno Fernandes close by. Fred, first touch. Dallow. Was threatening to reach Sancho. House and stopped it from doing so. And hacks another one clear. Shaw. Does it work? Not quite. What more? Thinks he was uh, first to the ball there and that Shaw fouled him. It looked a foul, didn't it? Very bright, what more? Really quick, direct. Fred. Six and a half minutes to go. Extra time is beckoning. Sancho. Middlesbrough can't afford to get sucked into the mindset of thinking we'll take extra time. They've been so bold. Front footed all the way through the second half. Can't change that now, but it looks as though it might be starting to happen. Can't avoid it, can you? No, it's, it's the best way to keep Manchester United at bay. Obviously, you, you carry far more of an attacking threat if you play with that mindset, but also, you know, if your back three can cope being a bit higher up the pitch and manage to deal with the 1v1s, then. But the, the thing for me, guys, is that Manchester United haven't really asked those questions of them in the second half. Fernandez hasn't asked anything with that. Apart from of himself. The has come all the way in the pitch from wide. And that cross was aimed at somebody arriving at the back post and no one there. We're talking in the first half about the Fernandez Ronaldo dynamic and Fernandez not hitting the heights this season. He's only scored in two of his last 24 games. Now that that to me is not a coincidental thing. Yes, you have dips in form, but that's a sustained drop. It really is, and, and the, what's the one thing that's different to when he was free-scoring? We're not saying for a minute that Ronaldo shouldn't be playing, by the way. No, it, it's, just, it's, just <laughs> a case, a way. it's just a case of complementing each other and finding a way for both of them to coexist and be able to play their games. And sometimes there are match-ups of players that that's harder to achieve than others. I think that, that's just the point. It's not a case of them clashing or not being able to do it. It's just finding the right solution that you can get both world-class players firing at the same point. Here's Fred, here's Sancho. Sancho once more. Maguire, the possession is all with Manchester United in these closing stages. As always in games and ties like this, as McTominay wastes that possession. We often say, don't we, there will be, either way, one more big chance in the game. Certainly at Old Trafford. Anywhere you see a big chance late on us at Old Trafford. And... Two weeks ago, I was there to see Marcus Rashford with the very last kick. Ralph Rennick's message in that one was, we had too many shots on goal in the closing stage, with no realistic chance of scoring, we have to be more patient. Well, nearly 87 minutes now, how patient do you want to be? Well, Rashford was, what, 93rd? Yeah. So we've got a bit of time. Dallow, no room. The reminder. Well, <laughs> he's seen it all, hasn't he? 
he'll have a, an idea of how this should be won from here. This is talking about tomorrow's racing at Sandown. Last time Middlesbrough were here, I was just about to say, was in the League Cup. Last time they were here in the Cup was in the League Cup 2015, and they won on penalties. Different game. Nil-nil. Manchester United's penalty is awful. A missed penalty has cost them tonight from Cristiano Ronaldo so far. Short. Dalla. Ilanga. Fred. Smoknair. Took around into the 89th minute. With the score 1 1. It seems a little bit forced at the moment. A little bit panicked. Manchester United trying to find that penetrative pass. Really hitting a old green wall. Defensively, they've been very good in this second half. are being pushed back towards their own penalty area all the time now. Shaw easily skips past Jones. Fred tried to keep the attack alive, it's belted away by Tavernier. Expecting Luke Shaw just to have a pot there. And here we come, this is the pressure we've been waiting for. Fred's cross, oh. miscued by Alanga. Came off the wrong part of the head. I mean... Miscued is, is actually being kind. It's, it's so badly mistimed, this header. Really gets far too much contact on it. Just almost needs to take your head away from the ball in that instant. Just glance it, or even just dive over and leave it. It's one of those crosses that can just drift into the far post. Just under one minute to go, then the board, when it goes up, will indicate another four to play. Jones. Dykesdale, that's turned into a good nudge forward. And Spora claims the deflection. Oh, Varane, I didn't detect one. He's adamant there was one. Such an optimistic shot. Probably wasn't the right choice. There's a couple of runners inside. If you can just turn out and find a pass, could have created something else for Middlesbrough. Too high for Jones. Sancho has some talk from Ronaldo. Ronaldo is getting into shooting position, just guided away from it in the end. Housen, clear will do. Just winding that right foot up then, Ronaldo, whenever you see him, just having those little touches, just looking for that window of opportunity to, to strike it with that really flat laces with lots of movement on the ball. Middlesbrough done really well, the midfield players just got out, didn't allow him that space. No chance for Shaw to drive on there. It's Manchester United who are hunting down a late winning goal again. Dallo. Fred. Fred goes to bed hearing cries of shoot in his ears. Very rarely takes the invitation. Let that one run cleverly. Fred gives Housen the slip. And straight into the gloves of Lumley from Ilanga. Was that the big chance? Second-headed chance for Ilanga. Just doesn't get it right, needs to get more angle, punch the ball back across the goal where it came from. Instead, straight down Lumley's throat, gets up really well. It is a chance, isn't it? Really good chance, just punch it into that far post. Anything in that corner of the goal, it's in. McTominay. Left by Fry. And the flag up against Ronaldo. Dale Fry took a big risk. He knew he was offside, guy. <laughs> yeah, you, you sent a back. He had a shout. for each other. <laughs>
two minutes to go. Still a Manchester United team, whether it be Solskjaer in charge or now Rangnick, but we can't fully work out this season. Just when they look as though they're on their way to cracking it again and going on a run and getting back towards the top of their game, and the game, it doesn't work for some reason. There's been plenty of other headlines for them to contend with in the build-up to this, but it wouldn't have affected the players. They might yet still nick it at the end. Ronaldo thinks he should have a free kick. Darren Can, the assistant, right there to disagree. Superb from Middlesbrough, second half. Not mm. good in the first. I mean, you have, you have to question the, the intensity and the fitness of Manchester United at times, don't you? You talk about the manager you know, coming away from that 4-2-2-2 formation because it requires huge energy levels and, and pressing and moving from out to in all the time. You know, I sometimes watch Manchester United, they just don't feel like they have that energy level, whether it be fitness-related or, or, or the mentality to go and play like that. It's been so long since they've been, been asked or needed to play with that type of intensity. It's like it's, like it's gone out of their bodies or, or their minds. They're going to have to dig deep to find another half hour here. Yeah, they're going to have to. I think, I think it's a, a really good thing for the team to have to do if it goes to extra time. Nick Tomine, it's bounced off Tavernier. One last chance time. Dallo. Ronaldo, Sancho, McTominay, now Sancho, the lift in was, well it was probably the right idea but Lumley's there and it is going to be extra time at Old Trafford, the home supporters were crying out for somebody in red to shoot, nobody really had a clear chance to do that, and we're going to have another 15 minutes each way, and then maybe a penalty shootout to determine who goes on to round five, the last 16 of the Emirates FA Cup, the fourth round of which has kicked off in breathtaking fashion. After 90 minutes, more to come, it's Manchester United 1, Middlesbrough 1. Welcome back to Old Trafford, where most of the noise is coming from the exuberant away section. The Middlesbrough fans are absolutely loving being back at a, a Premier League ground again. It's where they feel they should be visiting every other weekend. And they've come in their numbers to give great support to their team that has given a great response after a pretty insipid first half. Yes, a huge touch of fortune about their equaliser but they will feel it was deserved on the balance of play Manchester United have been made to rue missed opportunities again and hasn't that been a story for them, for them throughout the whole season there are going to be some changes Middlesbrough are going bold again with Aaron Connolly coming on Phil Jones is on for Manchester United so still feeling his way back into action after that long, long, long injury layoff. Connolly on loan from Brighton, a little bit like the other loanee, Falarin Balogun is still looking for his first goal for Middlesbrough. He started three games in the Championship. Jones is on for Varane for Manchester United, straight swap at the back. And... Uh, the experienced Lee Peltier has also come on for Middlesbrough. Neil Taylor, one of the players replaced. Oh, you see Peltier has taken up that position on the left of the... I don't think we could call it a back three anymore, it's a five. Connolly on for Spora. Spora was good second half, wasn't he? He was, but I think Connolly is an interesting addition. He's got bundles of energy, not particularly prolific in front of goal. But what he does do is he spins and runs at every opportunity. He can be a real outlet, especially in a game where 
Legs again, a little bit tired. Yes. Phil Jones has got plenty in his. Dallow. Fred. Bruno Fernandes. And, uh, as he shaped the shoot, he was blocked instantly. And I think he sort of kicked the ground, the player, and a bit of the ball. And it was all fall down. Marcus Tavernier down for Borough. Tavernier does well, actually. Just winding up for the shot. Makes that big sliding tackle, gets a big piece of the ball. Bruno Fernandes follows through and just kicks the side of his foot. That's a really good tackle from the midfield player. Like he's come out worse off as well. We've had a little bit more explanation about the, the Middlesbrough equaliser. And it is, as I said at the time, it's because it was ruled that Watmore wasn't the player who scored and his handling was ruled to be accidental. Now, the reason it was ruled accidental was because it came off his body onto his arm. It makes sense to me, but I know I know where your sentiment is. And I, I kind of agree with that. Well, I, I, I just find... I mean, my, my, my sentiment doesn't really matter too much. It's, it's just what are, what are the rules and what do we go by? And it just appears to be open to interpretation all the time. Therefore, hand, hand we're not handball is, is it? Not? We're not really cleaning it up because unless it's really super deliberate, then which will be barely any handball, so we can just allow most. And why does it matter if, if that happens to the player who's just about to pass it to somebody to score or to the person that's actually scoring? Well, they changed that last season because goals were being ruled out when it really was just, well, it, it's just hit him, he couldn't have done anything about it. Yes, but, but that, that, shouldn't, that should be OK in a build-up or the person that scores. Do you know what I mean? I do. So then why would we interpret it differently to somebody who's a second beforehand, who's five yards away, has handballed the ball? And the person tapping it in didn't. That seems bizarre to me. Sure, plenty of people have plenty of different theories. Plenty of those who want Middlesbrough to win will be thinking, let's just get on with it. Good goal. Deserved goal. And on the balance of play, absolutely deserved to be in this game, quite rightly so. Manchester United having to work really hard to progress in this cup. Great that all these years of football, century, well, over a century, we've enjoyed so much of the evolution of the game, and yet we still get mystified by its complexity. A simple game that is and so simple and yet so complex at the same time. There's nothing like a good old handball debate, is there? <laughs> Sancho down, holding the hamstring. Quite had as much impact as what you may have thought very on the ball in the first half causing havoc on that left side for Manchester United but been very quiet since the player's got the ball in the air again as though there's another problem there unless he's just wondering how the game restarts United put the ball out yeah I think he might be saying who's, whose ball is it surely can't be another flat Sancho just needed a, a bit of a stretch out no Jesse Lingard in the Manchester United squad today. He'll be back after the weekend, having been, well, depending on who you believe, either given a couple of days off to clear his head or ordered to have a bit of time off, having not got a loan move that he wanted during the transfer window. United say he was given days off. Lingard's response has been, my head's fine. Very contrasting views, aren't they? Do have Hannibal Mabry amongst their substitutes. The 19 year old is just back from playing for Tunisia at the Africa Cup of Nations. Exciting talent. Maybe not the game for him here. He's only played once for United. It's not a great clearance from Henderson, but managed to find Ronaldo. And right there, found Ilanga and quickly.
That's one matter these days as uh, somebody will sit and pass in midfield. We don't see him often enough to judge nowadays. And Mabry is the only attacking option available. If we're going to make another change. Without Jesse Lingard, and you feel like a game like this is very much tailor made for a player like him, isn't it? You know, the impact he's had for Manchester United coming on off the bench or even starting. I really do feel for the position he's in. I mean, he's shown last season he's more than capable of having an impact at a really good Premier League club. And just another example of how a player can almost get lost at this club and the size of it and not manage to figure the route out or the route into the team and you know it just feels a bit like the mismanagement of, of some of, of, of talent really we don't have that sort of problem to contend with right now it's been Chris Wilder's way even when he was at Sheffield United he doesn't tend to take too many changes to what is his or what becomes his favoured 11 this really is his, his cornerstone, isn't it? He likes the 11. He, mix, he might mix up the strikers a little bit. But on the whole, he keeps the core the same. This Piero, first real chance we've had to see him. What more? Oh! There might have been a chance there had Connolly gambled. Warmore across the face, and Connolly was back on his heels. But what more? It's just gesturing, saying, just gamble to the far post. We mentioned how. Conley isn't prolific in front of goal. He's had to put the brakes on, otherwise he would have ran offside, in fairness to him. Maybe just a bit too much pace on, on the cross from Watmore. Ilanga. Another problem for Manchester United. Bruno Fernandes. Not enough of his wits about him to whack the finger angrily. Look here, whether he gets, gets caught with the knee. Yeah, base of the back from uh, Peltier. Just grazes his back. Take the wind out of his sails. And Sancho just gently massaging the hamstring that he seemed to tweak at the end of normal time, and then again as extra time begun. I touched on the fitness of Manchester United and extra time certainly does challenge that. And Varane's already gone off the pitch, whether or not that was uh, something that was discussed in terms of preserving him and not overloading him with too many minutes. Sancho himself hasn't had a massive amount of football this season. Juan Mata's getting ready for Manchester United, but I think the intention is to take off Sancho. They don't want to replace Bruno Fernandes, who's uh, just getting a, an apology from Lee Peltier. Peltier started off at Liverpool. I'm pretty sure he's a scouser. He'd enjoy knocking Manchester United out of the cup. It was Liverpool who lost here in the fourth round last season. 3 2 thriller that was. Won by a Fernandes free kick. It was uh, a strike of beauty. Doesn't get on free kicks anymore. Don't start that debate. <laughs> no, not again. Here's Maguire. Well, there was Maguire. The fact it's gone for a throw is the only thing going for it. Uh, just grumbles <laughs> to the home support now. Sancho's off, he's already gone off. And on comes Juan Mata, who's not been seen at all in the Premier League this season. He sat on the bench a few times in other competitions. Twice an FA Cup winner, once with United in 2016, before that with Chelsea in 2012. I can't remember the last time I saw him play for Manchester United, but such a lovely passer of the ball. It's only 33. Yeah, a few more miles in the tank, yeah. I think the one big question mark over Juan Mata was always his, his mobility, wasn't it? I mean, he, he overcame that with how creative and clever his passing was. I think he's, he's gone over the age of 30, that's become harder and harder for him to, to really overcome. Henderson away. He 
hasn't been the same sort of fizz in extra time that there was for a large part of the second half. Shaw. But Tomine, maybe now. Free kick into the box, is it? No, the advantage is played for now. It's Ronaldo. Does the ref now bring it back? Well, no, he'd let it go. Ronaldo just didn't take advantage. Not sure it really was at the angle that no. he found himself in. No, I'd prefer the free kick from that position. I think it'd be better to have the free kick. Look, big shout of offside anyway. Yeah, yeah. But again, just getting caught the wrong side, was it Jones? A couple of times on that right-hand side, Middlesbrough. You've just got to be careful of the run and the reaction of the Manchester United player, whether it's been Sancho or Elanga got to react a little bit quicker and not allow them the wrong side. Lovely, up, up and away. Good climb from Dallow. It's a Manchester United throw. And here the reaction to Mata leaving it for Dallow. Get on with it is the, uh, the general feeling. Jones. Maguire. Jones. Matter. heads away, there was a stumble from Bruno Fernandes behind him. Ronaldo let it run, only to Housen. Ronaldo now. Mata. Ronaldo. Shaw. Four in red in the middle. Plenty in green. Housen who gets it away. He's uh, played a captain's innings for Middlesbrough. Pops up, tidies up. Gets in the way. The Middlesbrough midfield have really played well from the second half onwards. I mean, did okay in the first half to stay in there. Jones just got in a bit of a, a tangle there from Watmore. Now here's Ronaldo up against Dale Fry. Fry in between the number seven and the goal. Ronaldo goes on, palmed by Lumley. Dallo. Fred. Booted by Peltier. Surprised to see Ronaldo not able to manoeuvre that ball onto his right foot. You could tell he was thinking about it. Credit to Fry, just held a good position and just forced him onto his left foot, which was the right decision. United bossing the ball in this first period of extra time. Jones. That sort of uh, eye-opening moment for Jones came a moment ago when... Uh, it looked like there was a slip from Henderson. If he'd probably lost his footing, then what more was in? It's been a bit of a hesitant introduction for Phil Jones. Not quite got the assurance of Varane. Well, he's not that type of player, is he? Varane, very measured, reading of the game is second to none, really. He's in the right positions, makes it look easy. Out comes Lumley. He loves to start high up, doesn't he? He has all game. of you right around the globe have been enjoying the Africa Cup of Nations. This has a bit of a feel of Egypt here for Middlesbrough now. There are links. Mohamed Shauki played for Borough for a bit. Mido was at the club, the great striker. Actually one of the players who missed for Cameroon against Egypt yesterday. Two of the players, James Leo Saliki is a Borough player on loan for the season, he missed, and the uh, <laughs> centre-back, I call his name for now, came on as a sub and missed as well, Harold Mukadipi, I think. 
We're close to penalties now, there's another 15 to go after this. Manchester United getting closer to that Middlesbrough goal again, though. Elanga to Mata. Fernandez to Fred. Fred's shot is wide. Fred's shot was wild. Well, when I saw it fall to Fred in that space, I never really had that much faith. He's not a clinical finisher. He's scored a really good goal before, but that was a really bad slice. Doesn't get it out of his feet quick enough. It's good pressure from Middlesbrough in fairness. Once they realised the space was there, they tried to shut it down quickly. I like how he said that. He scored a really good goal before. He's got a, a few. As in, well, <laughs> for Manchester United, I've only seen him score one really good one. I mean, what is his goal record for Manchester United? Is it the one? No, he's got six. He's got six, is he? Two this season. Not many from that kind of range. I remember his first one for Manchester United was, was a beauty. That's right, that's the one. Half time in extra time. The roar comes from the away section again because Joe Lumley and his defenders have seen out another 15 minutes. And Manchester United have to regroup and dig deep to find a winner or its penalties. And we've already told you what happened the last time Middlesbrough came here and it went to penalties. Manchester United won, Middlesbrough won, 105 minutes in. The words of Chris Wilder yesterday have rung true, certainly second half. This isn't a sightseeing tour. I don't want them looking at players all fuzzy-eyed, they're looking at a competitor. And his team have really competed since he presumably got stuck into them a bit after 45 minutes. I just love those comments. I think they're brilliant comments. It's exactly the, the, the type of mindset that, that he has as a manager. Ilanga. Challenged by Jones, came back off Ilanga, it's a Borough ball. What was interesting about that as well is that fear creeps in, but if you were to ask these Middlesbrough players whether they enjoyed the first half or not, they'd have all said no, because it wasn't enjoyable. It's not enjoyable to play in games that you're not in. You know, but how they've a, a, applied themselves since half-time, the whole of the second half, probably for 25 minutes the second half especially, with a better team. And they've enjoyed this game far much more for having that kind of mindset. Matter to Dallow. The name of Middlesbrough's owner and chairman Steve Gibson being sung by the away fans as Ronaldo turns, shoots, another one is blocked by Fry. Flick goalwards and tipped over the bar, was it? Was Bruno Fernandes with the header and lovely got there. That's his save of the night. Really acrobatic save as well, has to react quickly, great delivery, plenty of pace on the cross. Flick from Bruno Fernandes, and that's just a fingertip from Lumley. Sees it over the crossbar. Well, there's one of the big chances we've talked about. And in fact, uh, it wouldn't have stood anywhere. Whistle went for a free kick for Borough. Let's take nothing away from Lumley's save. McTominay, intercepted by Housen again, Payero. That's uh, looked like an attack from Harry Maguire, but it's gone Manchester United's way. Running away with Bruno Fernandes, Shaw. Runs around the corner to give himself the best angle, it's not the best cross. Dallow. Fred. Dallo stopped first by. Who was it back there? It's Tavernier. Tavernier. Brilliant tackle. Yeah, really, man. really tracked the, the run, didn't he? Mata. Bruno Fernandez finds Fred. Dale Fry's got better as the game's gone on. Yeah, definitely. But, but I think he's a better defender when when the bodies were around him. You know, when it's condensed, when you're sat on the edge of your own box and you've got your other centre-backs around you, he's a, he's a really good defender. Being isolated in space is hard. McTominay, he let the ball run away. I'd say that about every minute of player getting better as the game's gone on. Still a test for them in the next 12 minutes. Bruno Fernandes, there's Dale Fry again. 
Fred. Shaw. A little bit of room starting to appear for Manchester United, but not in that congested penalty area. That one's cleared by Dykstel. It's hard to see them getting a breakthrough at the moment. They're not really quite finding the movement patterns or the quality from the delivery to cause any massive problems for Middlesbrough. Like you mentioned, Fry has just been a magnet at the moment. Any ball on the ground or in the air is just clearing and really seems to be in the right place at the right time. Maguire. Del Fry was an under-19 World Cup winner with England in 2017. I'm sure he's watched regularly by all the Premier League teams, but he is a Borough boy. He's part of the fabric of his home club. As the cross goes over the head of Ronaldo, he was being closely marked by McNair with Fry in front of the two of them. And it's a Middlesbrough throw, and you can see Pelty is in no great hurry about it. We've got ten minutes, just over ten minutes to really manage this game, Middlesbrough. All of this slowing it down, not allowing Manchester United to build up any head of steam or really apply any pressure. I'm not surprised he's got cramp. He's had a few runs to deal with, hasn't he? Jones on that right-hand side. Full of energy. This time last year, he was playing on loan for Queen of the South. Just north of the border in Scotland. Only a couple of years before that, as mentioned earlier, he was with Tooting and Mitcham United, quite a way down the football pyramid. He's playing a starring role at Old Trafford this evening. He looks fit, doesn't he? I think that's one thing, again, a credit to Chris Wilder. I look at all these, these teams over the years, and one thing he really does demand is, is super fitness, super commitment and energy. And he's got that out of his team tonight. It's now to run by Peltier, who's got plenty of know-how. Another match in the play we replaced, Neil Taylor has too. It's just a, an energy thing, that change. McNair. He'll put his hand up for a penalty if needed. Jones too close, Middlesbrough free kick. McNair is Borough's penalty taker of those on the field now. Spora has gone off. Might not get to that yet. Chris Wilder's team have a chance here. Tavernier readies himself. Fry, McNair. Providing a bit, ex a bit of extra height, Dale Fry in particular. He's being challenged by Fred as he looks for some room. Deep towards him. Had a lot to do with it, but he's done well to force a corner all on his own. And Jones felt he had to uh, knock it back. It just seems a lot of the deliveries in this game have gone high into the back post. No chance to score for Fry, but he tried to head the ball back across. Got a good clean contact on the ball, and he's forced the corner. That is the Middlesbrough corner. That's where their fans are willing this one in. This is a dangerous situation. This. If they could score. What a trip, back across the penalty and up the A19 it would be. Tavernier. Henderson can't get near it. Maguire has sorted it out. He needed to as well, didn't he? Good ball in, right in that key area. Harry Maguire wins a really important header. Way through the second period of extra time. Jones heads out. He's content to have possession in Manchester United's half. And maybe, yeah, Pelty is going to try the ball and wind up the long hurl here, perhaps. Oh, maybe not. Good to have choices. It looks like they can throw the ball a fair way. Tavernier, Peltier. Bruno Fernandes just keeps it. Given away then, though. Here's Dyke still. Nicely played. Payero. Can't get 
Lucas Maguire. Ilanga. McTominay. Forced wider than he wanted to be. Ronaldo's there waiting. That's too much of Fred, though, who's then got a hold and did hold back Connolly and will get a yellow card. Well, referee bang in the right position there, and that's the right call. Connolly just got the wrong side of Fred. He had to hold him back. And Fred was booked in the last round against Aston Villa, so if Manchester United do win this, he won't be playing in round five. I just think they've run out a little bit of energy. Manchester United, they've not really caused too much. It's, it's, I mean, the ball's been all in this half, hasn't it? In the second half of extra time, Middlesbrough asking the questions and applying the pressure. Manchester Weather's set in. Made up by Housen. Knocked back across. Saved by Henderson. It was Aaron Connolly's flick towards goal. You talk about chances left in a game. You're not going to get many better than that for Aaron Connolly. What about now for Manchester United? Mata brings it down from the sky. Ronaldo. Push, push, push for the decisive touch now. Both teams. What a chance for Aaron Connolly. I mean, just getting the right contact there is a goal. Mata. Dalla. Sure. Five to go. Manchester United fans make their displeasure heard at seeing the ball being passed backwards, but Middlesbrough got such a good shape. Attack, attack, attack is the shout. Ilanga. Moved the other way as Maguire made the pass. Timing wrong between them. Ralph's keeping dry. I think he's written his list yet. It's not like he's uh, thinking about a lot at the moment. There's that chance look. I mean, that is. Just get. Almost go with your. Open your body up and go with your side foot. He's opted to go with the outside of his boot there, Connolly, and just try and flick it to the back post where. Maybe that punchy instep into the near post was the better option. One for Watmore to chase, and Henderson maybe sensed that he would overtake Jones. Fred, Watmore chases again. Ilanga. McTominay's Watmore just to ease him away from the ball. Free kick Manchester United. He's just done a couple of lung-busting runs there, what more. I'm not surprised his hands on his knees, really chasing the ball down, trying to win one in behind, then putting pressure on Manchester United. Oh, Davis has cramped up again. That makes you think about penalties too. It's all about the, the mentality, though, guys, isn't it? Whether you've had cramp or you're tired. Those heavy legs in the run-up. Yeah, but it's, it's in the mind. Such a mental game, penalty shootout. And the manager sees it. It's up to the manager to identify that. And don't forget the playoff final, 1998, Sunderland against Charlton, when Mickey Gray took the decisive kick for Sunderland. That you could see that he sort of he seized up to such an extent he could barely get a jog to the ball. There have been so many of those down the years. Now, here's an experienced campaigner to come on, maybe to fire one himself. Big Sol Bamba. Well, is this a, a tactical penalty substitution? Who knows? Is Sol Bamba on the list? Is he somebody that Chris Wilder really believes he's going to cope with the pressure of a penalty? He is the, the obvious choice with the defender coming on, just maybe push Dykesdale a bit wider and Bamba back into the centre of the defence. I mean, Jones has done well, I'm not surprised he has cramped up, he's really put a shift in for Middlesbrough. Got more to defend yet, to see it through to spot kicks, in from Shaw, Lundley's made an early decision and it was the right one. Dallo. McTominay, it's a looper, Lundley had to watch it. 
to be dealt with. Couldn't afford to leave it and see if he hit the crossbar over the net. If you're ever in doubt, just get your hand on it and tip it over, and he's done that lumbly. Matter in a hurry. Maguire, not enough on it, if anything. Cleared by Tavernier. Fred. He was off balance, he almost lost the ball. It's a Middlesbrough throw. It's just another high, loopy corner as well. I mean, the, the, the corner delivery has been so poor. No real fizz or zip to the ball. Nothing really inviting for anyone to go and head up. Just been kind of clipped high to the back post every time. 27 Manchester United attempts on goal to Middlesbrough 6. We shouldn't be surprised by those numbers. But maybe we continue to be surprised by Manchester United not taking advantage, not putting the ball in the net nearly enough. Short. Bruno Fernandes dealing in seconds now. Maybe there'll be another minute to add on. Jones. Maguire. It's awkwardly behind him. There'll be two minutes more. Jones. McTominay. Where's Elanga going? Away from goal. Shaw. Can Middlesbrough hold on? Another cross is repelled, this time by Tavernier. Fred's onto it. Ronaldo. Is he being held back? He's making nothing of it. And Middlesbrough can clear again. Jones just has to be watchful with Connolly close. Maguire. many other competitions in the world that can give you a tie as absorbing and as tense as this this early on fourth round 32 teams left in it yet and it hasn't been the surge that you'd expect from Manchester United so late in extra time oh Dykesdale took no chances he's given Manchester United another corner right at the end what were we saying early on the only team in England's Premier League who haven't scored from a corner this season be the way to write a story if they do with the last action of the game. A little bit of that has got to overhang the quadrant, I think it was doing just in from Fernandez. Not away yet. Fernandez drills it and it comes off Jones' head. Nothing you could do about that. Well, it'd been some reaction from Phil Jones if he guided that into the net. Just tries to steer it in. It's a real strike from Fernandez. It's never going to go down. Very little time to react for Phil Jones. Lumley takes his time. No goal in Fergie time today. And Anthony Taylor, the referee, who signals time in the contest. It has finished level between Manchester United and Middlesbrough. It's only a small part of the story. Manchester United 1 0 up at half time, even after Ronaldo had missed a penalty. Back came Middlesbrough. Plenty to talk about in their equaliser. Watmore handled it in the build up, but allowed to stand as Crook scored. And then they've hung on with a defensive display in the extra 30 minutes, and they've taken it to penalties at Old Trafford. Enter the Gladiators. This is when goalkeepers turn it around, and they are the ones who become the hero strikers. They're sent to stage with every kick. Henderson will be really relishing the opportunity, won't he? He's the type of character that likes the big occasion, likes to be the man. And 
Manchester United will still quibble with the Middlesbrough equaliser, but that's long gone now. They've had the chances to win the game in normal time, in extra time, and they haven't taken them. Now their players have to take their chances and hold their nerve from the penalty spot, but first to make the long walk is the former Manchester United player. He is Middlesbrough's penalty taker, Paddy McNair. He's been pretty cool most of the game. Had a really solid match, not really put a foot wrong. And he's got good experience with penalties, like you say. No stranger to a penalty kick. But taking that first one so important. You really do lay the marker down and put the pressure straight onto the opposition. Different situation this than in regular time in a championship game. There's a bit of a gulp from him there as he looked to the sky and then put the ball down on the spot. So McNair first up for Middlesbrough against Dean Henderson in Manchester United's goal. And McNair very deliberately, very calmly passes the ball into the corner. Cool as a cucumber. McNair might have looked a little bit, a tad, shall we say, nervous beforehand, but that is far from a nervous penalty. Almost waiting for the movement of Henderson, poised to go either way, and just strokes that into the bottom corner. A hugely experienced Juan Mata is first in line for United. Kicked a ball in competitive action much at all this season. This is a very important kick of the ball. And he is up to it. I had my doubts. I really did. I kind of saw him step up and thought, like he said, not had a lot of football. It doesn't matter for this magician with a left foot, really. Lovely strike, good body shape, just sends it into the corner. And you don't forget how to do that. No, nope, true. One of the Middlesbrough substitutes, Martin Payero, the Argentinian. It's been pretty cool since he's come on the pitch, shows some nice touches, technically looks a good player. Let's see if he's got the mentality for a penalty. An Argentinian number 10 ought to. Oh. And he has found a way just underneath the body of Henderson. Luck continues to favour the Borough. I just love the reaction of that Middlesbrough fan there. Knew how fortunate that was right in that area. Henderson guesses the right way and almost overcooks it. Gets too far ahead of the ball. Punches the ground in frustration. Very, very lucky. Harry Maguire, we've talked about his penalty at last summer's European Championship. Thundered home. Lumley's in the way of this one if he can be. It's a captain's kick. There's only one way. Harry Maguire takes a penalty. That one actually a little bit more measured than what I've seen before, but look how far that is in the corner. They're unsavable with that kind of power pulled right into the side netting. Bruno, Cristiano move aside. There's a job there. Why not? Looks very consistent with it as well, doesn't he, Harry Maguire? Johnny Howson. One skipper has just scored. Step forward the other. So solid all game, led by example. And Housen makes it look a breeze as well. All good, well, apart from Piero's, they've been good penalties. That was very similar to McNair's. I said led by example, certainly does that again. Little shimmy in the run-up, I think he just throws Henderson, who seems to be going that side every time. Just strokes it into the corner, very cool. There's nothing like that relief after you've scored a penalty, the pressure build-up and then the relief of scoring. Here comes Fred. Ronaldo and Bruno Fernandes still wait their turn. Finds the corner too, right into it. Good effort from Lumley. Good penalty. 
Look at that. It just shows you if the keeper goes the right way and you get enough power right in the corner and it's low like that, keepers can't get down to them. Good penalty from Fred. That's how you do it when you're fresh off a flight from Rio. <laughs> now he has tired legs. This Mar is tired legs. Marcus Tavernier. He's been everywhere in midfield today. And his brother regularly scores from the spot for Rangers. Tavernier to take. Four out of four for Middlesbrough. He might have tired legs, but they're not that tired. He's just stuck one right in the top corner. Big, big pressure, big nerves. Look at that oh. for a penalty. Beautiful. Unreachable. I mean, he goes exactly the right spot, Henderson, but nowhere near it. Power as well. And what's in his head? Not the miss from earlier, surely. No, he must have ejected that. That is out of the way. Which corner is he going to go in, though, guy? The eve of birthday, boy, 37 tomorrow. Here come the big guns. Ronaldo. This time, through the grasp of Lumley. Feeling in that. Well, you see that traditional Ronaldo stand straight down the line of the ball, that shuffle to the left with a sidestep. And that's the strike he was looking for. Little touch, I think, on the way through from the keeper. But the power he hits that with, the force he hits it with, it's top draw. Sol Bamba. There it is, there's the, the oh. tactical substitution. Little wink to the referee. <laughs> the old head in the Middlesbrough squad. Jump on the line from Henderson, the referee's making absolutely sure that he'll stick to the regulations. Here's Bamba, and it's a beauty. I mean, talk about cash. That is so relaxed from Sol Bamba. Strolls up to it, just looks like he's striking it into the corner, no problem. Almost like a warm-up kick. And that's a man who last year beat cancer. And how, you know, taking a penalty then, what does that... Where does that weigh? It just showed, didn't it? No fear, nothing to worry about. Now Bruno Fernandes, who's missed from the spot this season, early in the Premier League campaign against Aston Villa. That one went into orbit. Is he going to give us the little hop or a conventional kick? Is he going to score and keep Manchester United in the cup? Of course he is. I mean, that's just cheeky. Our top players deal with pressure. This is just that little hop you were mentioning, very cool. Wait for the keeper to move. I'll just stroke it in the bottom corner. Five out of five for Manchester United and Middlesbrough. Now we're down to those who weren't on the initial list. Does that mean this is where it gets interesting? Oh, it's been interesting <laughs> right enough. <laughs> we are really getting to that stage now. And this guy's been everywhere. Bundle of energy on the pitch. Has he got the temperament to step up and be calm? He surely he can have an impact. Can he be calm in this situation? Duncan Watmore, as a schoolboy, he was on Manchester United's books. And he scored wow. past Manchester United. The advantage still just with Middlesbrough because United have to score now and have to keep scoring. Beautiful penalty. That's lovely. He's been excellent since coming on Watmore. Really, really good, and that's a lovely stroke penalty. Beautifully executed. Scott McTominay. Player who's got Manchester United through two or three cup ties over the last two seasons. This kick to keep them in this one. In this season's competition. <laughs> McTominay. Oh. Underneath goalkeeper Lumley. Power is beating the keepers here. It's a funny way it went under Lumley. Thought he kind of had too many steps and it just went through under his waist, very similar to the one that Henderson could have saved. 
We are now at Fall Guy time. Dale Fry has been outstanding. And he's just been like a magnet in the box for Middlesbrough. Cleared with his head, his foot, got blocks in, had a brilliant game. Got a feeling he might just go for power here. Middlesbrough born, Middlesbrough's rock. And Fry scores and made it look just as simple as those who have gone before him. I mean, what a quality penalty shootout this has been. A couple of penalties that could have been saved, but that one... Confident, in the corner. Really good penalty from Fry. Diogo Dallo. The seventh in line for United. Not noted for scoring goals. How is he at taking penalties when the pressure counts? I see Lumley coming quite far off his line there, just trying to psych out Darlow a little bit. Here comes Dello. And he scores right into the corner again. It may have even brushed the post on its way. You can't save those. Even if you go the right way, you don't save those. Oh, lovely confidence. Just puts nice powers. Nothing like a good connection with the side foot with plenty of power. You get the accuracy, but you get that bit of power as well. That If the goalkeeper guesses that way, he can still take the ball into the back of the net. It's been a magnificent seven out of seven so far all round. Lee Peltier. Look at the faces of these supporters, the Middlesbrough fans, just fingernail biting stuff. Here's another defender who's been around the block over a career of many years. And Peltier nestles the ball into the top corner. The look on his face is everything. He knows how good a penalty that is under real pressure. Look at that. That's very close from going over the crossbar. The smile of relief. Anthony Alanga, 19 years old, a real talent. Whatever happens with this kick, he will shine in the future. Is he going to dazzle now? He has to. It's a big, big moment for him. How is the teenage temperament? Just put it over, and Manchester United's season in the FA Cup is over. Middlesbrough have done it again on penalties at Old Trafford. The championship team from Teesside go into the fifth round. Boy, have they, they held their nerves tonight. Well, it's just absolutely unbelievable stuff here from a team that was down and out really at half time or half an hour into the game looked like they had no hope of winning this football match it just shows you the magic of this FA Cup I really feel for Elanga it's a massive step in his development as a young player that you have to overcome these things but all credit to Middlesbrough the way they've stuck in this game it's just been absolutely brilliant it has to be somebody in a penalty shootout. You always feel for the player who it ends up being. But right now, you've got a smile for Middlesbrough. What they've given to this tie, the way they rallied at half-time, came back at Manchester United, believed in themselves that little bit more. Lucky with the equaliser, that will be talked about for long enough. Lucky with their attitude, not one bit. Fortune favours the Borough. Just looking at that relationship as well between Chris Wilder and Sol Bamba, having an embrace there. Sol Bamba's penalty, unbelievable how calm and relaxed he was. And he's thoroughly enjoying this moment, and rightly so, since he's taken over at the club. It's been nothing but a real success so far, and this is just another step for him in building that belief, building the momentum of Middlesbrough's season. They're certainly enjoying it. Nine and a half thousand have travelled to support Middlesbrough at Old Trafford this evening. Most have travelled down from 
the northeast, the border with North Yorkshire. Teesside. And they'll be singing and cheering all the way back across and up the A19 because this is a night that will live long in the memories. Chris Wilder only relatively recently took over, 7th of November. He's making something happen with Middlesbrough and he's taken them to the fifth round of the Emirates FA Cup this evening. Manchester United knocked out on penalties. It finished 1-1. Borough, 8 out of 8 from the spot.